What's up guys, Rudalinel here, coming back at you with some more Python code, and we are continuing our small little mini-series on the sub-process module, and we moved on from the call function, the, the, the idea, or at least the, the process, the module, I don't want to say module, the, the method, the function that we were looking at in the last video. And uh, now we're moving on to check outputs. Now, check output is really kind of cool, but really what it does specifically is it sets up the standard output to be your Python program. It will return the standard output of a command, or what exactly it will tell you inside your shell, or in batch, or bash, or whatever the case may be. So it, it kind of has the same setup as call. I mean, we pass in arguments, we can set up standard input and standard error, or that sort of thing. We can determine things with the shell, and um, we can even ultimately determine universal new lines, which I think is all about um, displaying like character returns and line feeds rather than a new line like you would in Unix. So that's that's the goal anyway. Okay. I, ju I just put a jelly bean in my mouth because I, I forgot that I was making a video. <laughs> All right. Um. Let's. What was I doing? <laughs> right. 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 Let's get into this the shell. From sub process, import freaking everything, and let's check the output. We can pass this in inside of a list, remember, of our ls command. And I'm just going to say this is a variable display. Okay, now let's print out what was displayed. And there's all the crap in my home directory. <laughs> and you can even see some of the some of the videos that I have <laughs> being processed right now for the for the video series. Okay, I I should really stop breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> I have to have a little bit of fun with this though, you know. So let's take a look at this a little bit more of the documentation though. The arguments shown above are merely the most common ones described in frequently used arguments. Blah blah blah. Uh, anyway, let's look at their example. If oh, they're running the echo command. Right, right, right. Now the echo command is to display standard output. So this is kind of cool. Let's try that. Let's go ahead and check output. Echo. Hello world. And you can see that they, uh, we have the exact same output because they're doing the exact same thing here. Alright, now when we're setting up exit 1, ooh, what's happening here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It returns an error because returns a non-zero exit setup, so there, there was a problem. But it's setting up with the shell because exit, remember, is not a is not a line. So the only way that this will run correctly is if there is not an error in if the program returns with a successful return value. So check the output. Check the output. There we go. Of exit one, and shell can equal true. Now we have this exact same problem here. Good, it, it raised the error, called process error, and it runs with a problem, so we can't get the error from it. So if we want to capture standard error in the result, this is kind of what I was telling you in the last video, but I didn't get a chance to actually use it. So let's go ahead and, tr and try it though. If we were to run check output, and I want an array, Let's say ls, and I'll use a file that does exist for now, tads. And we can just run that without a problem. And okay, this is displaying everything inside the tads directory that we had as a that we had up here. Because I know that that's in my current directory right, right now because we were able to find that out with the ls command. Good, good, good stuff, good stuff. Now, let's take a look at something that doesn't actually work for us. Let's say tadza. Now, that does not exist, so that's why it's going to give us a problem here, but we want to be able to have that standard error, so we can pass that in to standard output. And actually, we're going to want to make this in the shell. Okay, now it's just going to tell me freaking everything, because it knows that it's not working, so it's going to try it. Let's take a look at how it works in here. Alright, they're using exit 0 ls non existent file. Ooh, and they're not even using it as a list. They're using it as a, as a full on string. Okay, cool. Let's try that. Let's experiment a little bit more. 
ls non-existent file exit zero cannot access non-existent file no such directory okay remember it has to oh I see I see it has to successfully run it has to have uh, an error code of zero or a return value of zero okay but it's still going to tell us the problem here so we're setting it up to use exit zero to make sure that the command runs successfully now the only way that we can do that is to have the shell to be on but this ls non-existent file is going to return an error so that's why we're setting up standard error to equal the regular output because after all we are running the check output function <laughs> see what's happening here it's a little bit contrived, and I know it might be hard to understand, and I probably did a really bad job of showing you how to do all this, but that's exactly what we can do here. We can check the output, and we can manipulate what's going in and out of the, the command, and it'll return to us the actual process. <laughs> yeah, I think I've run dry for this video. <laughs> I, I can't think of much more. I can't even finish thinking about my sentence. Alright, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.